You know, when you walk through time, if God does not help you, you make the mistake of thinking that your life is your own and that you are living for yourself. That would have been the case if the essence of our existence were to terminate at the point of death. But fortunately and unfortunately, our existence does not terminate at the point of death. For those of us who are alive, good to see you, Doc. We transit to glory. You know, ideally, nothing created by God will ever end. Because the, the nature of God is encoded into God's creation. So everything God creates that carries his essence will live forever. Even the sinner will never die. The difference is your location when you transit from time. And so for us who have understanding by the help of the Spirit, we know that our life here on earth is an investment into the life and the age that is to come. And what we believe are not commonly devised fables. We are the only belief system in this world that our leader went there and came back. So anything he tells us, he speaks with authority. And this is not something built on a shaky foundation. He said all he said before he died. To let you know that he has authority over the grave. Yes. And he has authority over the age to come. Yes. So he wasn't hoping that it will happen. He knew exactly what will happen. And he predicted it with highest level precision. He said, destroy this temple in three days, I will build it again. And in three days, he rose from the dead. So he, he wasn't talking assumption. He knew exactly what he was saying. Because he's the Lord of time and eternity. And so if he gives us marching orders, it's in our own interest to align with those marching orders. And so when we glean from the pages of scripture, one of the things we discover is that the true meaning of life is not in the multitude of your possession. In fact, your possessions become relevant because they become resources that empower you to serve the purposes of God. So the true meaning of life is the degree to which you are relevant in his agenda. Because we have come to discover that he has an agenda on the face of the earth. And now it's also important to note that he is capable to bring to pass his own counsel by his power. The reason we are included is not because he's handicapped. The reason we are included is because his love necessitates it. On account of his love, he wants us to participate with him so that we can experience reality from his plane. It's not because he is helpless. Because before creation was, or before creation began, he was. Only him knows for how long he has been before creation. Because he predates creation. That means you can't define him. There's no context in which you can put him successfully. If someone is older than creation, how then will you, what, what will you call his existence? If somebody is older than existence, which context will you put him? So even what you call existence is a reality inside of him. And so he had a civilization going on before creation began. Now the reason he wants us to participate with him in this civilization is because his love motivated him to give us the opportunity to experience him at another level. And so it's a privilege for us to be part of God's agenda, but we must realize it and commit ourselves to it because it's in our commitment that our existence will have meaning and, and relevance. Glory to God.
Geneva and the Dutch in Africa. And I understand that. And I think two things are important. One is water. And I don't mean just the two things in water. But we have to understand that there are three things that we should be looking and this came out of two